I want you to tell me about a very old friend, Mrs. Quinn. Please talk about Mrs. Quinn. Do you know why? Sean, her son, and I have lunch now and then, and I'd like him to know something about his mom. Doesn't he know anything? He never asked any questions. So tell me about Mrs. Quinn. She was a remarkable person. Who was a who was a remarkable person? Mrs. Quinn. Oh, okay. She was a graduate with honors from Stanford in, in those days. It was a wonder they let them into the college. I think Mrs. Quinn knew the president or something or another. <laughs> Stanford is uh, pretty high class. So she graduated with honors from Stanford. The two girls. She had a sister. Oh. who was married also to a Navy man. And Mrs. Quinn was married to a Navy dentist. And so when, she, when uh, when he died, he was, I think he was a hundred and something. He was a very stubborn gentleman. And I think Mrs. Quinn was his favorite. When when who died? Hmm? When who died? Um, see, their last name was... I kind of think that it was Shaw. S-H-A-W. But who died? What is the relationship between that person and... Mrs. Quinn. He was her father. Oh, I'm sorry. I really didn't understand. So her father died, and when her father died, what happened? Well, she was trying to eke out a, a living in that little tiny shop, which was nothing but an enlarged closet. But she stuck it out, and so then it finally came to the point where she had had to empty the house in, uh, where did they live? I think in the state of Washington. She had to empty her father's house out. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then what happened? Because she was living in National City. Well, so she just came over to the house and we had our little deal where my kids went to school at, at 8 o'clock. But it was right close to us. And her kids were the boys, the two boys. And they... They went to St. Augustine's, of course, and she wouldn't let them, oh, she wouldn't let them have the money for the cars, because they were entitled to a car from the Navy on graduation. And they lived about mm, probably eight blocks from the bus stop. And she made them walk every day. Well, what happened when she emptied her father's house in Washington? Well, she went through the house yeah. and she found a lot of things that she hadn't seen for a long time. And let me tell you what she found. As she was going out the front door, 
she found this big box like you get for, when you buy a, a bathrobe for somebody or two or three sweaters like this. And you couldn't in a million years tell me what was in that box. Well, you tell me then. Thousands of meticulously perfect cut squares for, for a quilt. Well, then you can roll your eyes, but for us it was like falling into a mine, you know, full of dollars. So she brought them over to my house. We used to, uh, we used to, my kids didn't have to start for school as early as hers did because they had to go on the streetcar. And so she came home with her box of squares and she said, so what am I going to do? And I said, you're going to make a quilt. And she said, Isabel, when am I going to do this? I said, you'll find a time and you better do it while you have the time, before you have a chance. So she and I... Uh, and then I, th I found a little picture of a, um, a puzzle, you know, in a newspaper. And you know how, can you visualize the, 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 little, the little puzzle? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. Well, it appealed to me. I was going like this, and I saw this picture. And I said, I know what I'm going to do with that. So I, I called her up and I said, yeah, come on over, I want to show you something. So she came over. Oh, by the way, the first thing she did was she bought a new car when her father died. <laughs> she... she he went right down and bought a brand new car. Well, it was a very wise thing because she had, you know, you when you're sewing a lot, you have these rolls of material. And um, anyway, darn it. The next day, she brought me a square about like this, made with the pieces, just one square, with the pieces of the, to be used for a quilt. And she was as proud as a peacock about it. Oh, she felt so smart and I felt so stupid but we were a perfect pair well both of you sewed a lot well that's what we sewed we right. sewed quilts and so did she make a quilt out of the little squares that she got she made I don't know how many quilts there were thousands of little squares and if she did it, you can better believe that they were perfectly cut. You know, she used to outline every square with a pencil. And then at the proper time, she would sit and cut. And that's what you remember about Mrs. Quinn. Oh, yes. And then uh, she would sew the squares together, see, into into this pattern. 
Now, when I say a square, I mean a square about like this. Here, I'll just put this over here. Don't leave it there. Well, I'll, I'll put it, I'll give it back to you when I leave. She would sew it into the square. Yeah, and then you take the squares and you sew them together. Yes. And you have a, your quilt top. Well, she stuck to it. And I don't remember her having any kind of a, an outlet for her talents, you know. And I would tell her about going here, there, and everywhere with, with my family, with Daddy. And, uh, and she said, you know, I think we, you and I should do something together, just the two of us. And I said, all right, we can do it. So we did do it, you know. You, when you make the big square, you put the little squares like this together. Lots of little squares make up one big square. Mm -hmm. And then I would go to the end of the month sale in San Diego and I would buy the sheets, two for, two for, two for, I don't know, I think it was two for, two for three dollars or two for five dollars, I don't know which. And I would go crazy, you know, with all this pile of cloth, which I, I'm sure I never intended to put together into a square, but but she she egged me on, and we agreed that she would sew the little squares together into a bigger square, and we would make a. a, a, a a square the size of a of a bedspread, and we did that for three or four years. Did she ever sell any of these quilts? No. She wouldn't sell them. I told her that. I said, you know, you could make more money selling one of those quilts instead of uh, instead of just. Uh, giving them away. Well, she gave them to school nurses. She gave them to people in sanitariums, san sanatoriums. Right. And that's what she did with them. That's what we did with them. I was part of the I was part of the picture. We would, she would come over to my house at eight o'clock, and my kids would go out this door, and she would come in this door in the porch. <laughs> and I would have the floor cleared, and then we would get down on our hands and knees, and. Uh, we would do. Do you like this? No, I don't like it. I I I, I think I don't I don't like that color in there. Uh, let's try something else. So we try something else, and then she would go home and and sew them together. And then I would give her the sheets. To you have to have a backing for them for the front and for the back. But that's what I've, I contributed in. And I could afford that because I didn't have anywhere to go and spend it. 
and we never talked about it, except the school nurses. You know, they knew about it because they would go to her when they needed anything. To her, but it was really to us. And so, over the years, you made many, many quilts. Mm -hmm. And they all went to... But we never took money for them. They went to school nurses, they went to sanatoriums. Did they go to family? Mm -hmm. Family? I know you gave us quilts. Did she give quilts to her kids? Well, sure. We, we all had quilts. And all of this was done by hand? Well, we, we, uh, see, we made the strips to get a, a certain pattern that we used all the time. We ended up with a bias pattern. Because you you start putting the little squares on the floor, and then then you sew them together, and then Mrs. Quinn would uh, press them, iron them, and uh, and I said to her one time. You know, I don't know why you do it this way. Why don't you just go ahead and sell them and, and take the money and give it to the people? Because, Isabel, nobody else will do it. And I want them to have something that they can say, this is mine. That's the way it was. I don't know how many quilts we made because, you know, when you get a hung up on something like a project like that, you never want to quit. You just keep going and going and going. <laughs> I really want to thank you for this story. For what? For the story. Thank you very much. About the quilts? Yes. The last thing I would have connected with you. Well, I didn't know you were going to tell me about quilts, and it doesn't matter. I'm just very glad for the story. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I know that Sean and his brother and his sisters will enjoy this story. But you know, they never, they never participated in in our project. I never just, did either. I didn't know it existed. We just put up with her. <laughs> did we put up with you? <laughs> no, you didn't, because my my house wasn't as orderly as hers. 